Let's talk about bands for a second. I talked a little bit about this on the after show. I think the garage band is like one of the coolest aesthetics in the world, uh, at least to me. How much I, I just loved, I used to love watching um, like old 90s movies where like the kids, like School of Rock, for example, right? Where like the kids are, you know, playing music in their mom's basement and all of a sudden like, you just like it's that whole aesthetic of like oh like i you know you're you're in high school you don't have much going on but you really like music you like jamming out with your friends and you're creating music in your mom whatever in your parents basement and like you know potentially one day like someone sees you at the battle of the bands i know that's a very specific very fucking 1991 nirvana aesthetic but like it's a cool, it's like the ultimate come up story for a lot of people, right? A lot of bands started that way. You talk vampire, you talk about all the bands in the world, right? Fallout Boy, Maroon 5, freaking Panic at the Disco, uh, All American Rejects, like all of the popular bands started in this weird uh, mom's basement type of vibe. And what concerns me about the future of bands is that Adam Levine did an interview with this guy, Zane Lowe, on uh, who's like, kind of the head of like uh, i think iheart radio or one of these big, big radio stations and uh zane low basically asked him like what do you think of uh rock and roll now or like you know kind of radio uh, whatever pop that genre and adam levine basically said something along the lines of like bands are dying and like it sucks to not see as many bands be as successful as they used to be this used to be one of the most successful genres in the world right 2003 one was the year that was or 2002 was the year that was fucking owned by songs about jay and by maroon five right it was paramore it was my chemical romance it was all of these various bands that just like own the 2000s you talk about the 2000s aesthetic it's a lot of rock it's a lot of loud ass electric guitar and it's a lot of drums that's what it is and unfortunately like you have guys like adam levine who are, literally are in bands that are very mega successful maroon five adam levine were to retire like i told him in episode one to do so uh he'd be mega famous he'd be mega rich but he said bands are dying and a lot of bands came out and like retweeted his quote and were like how could you say this like this is awful like we're still around Par like paramore's lead singer retweeted something and um a couple other bands like said some stuff but listen, I'm not here to say bands are dying because bands are bands exist, right? The Strokes put out an album last year and it was fantastic. Go listen to it, by the way, if you haven't. It's really, really good. Uh, Maroon 5 still puts out music. Do I like it? Not particularly. Is it for everyone? Eh, maybe, right? Panic at the Disco is still putting out music. Last I checked. Fall Out Boy. I mean, uh, you know, they were relevant in 2014, I guess. Like, I don't know. But, like, you know, the point is there are bands that are putting out music. Vampire Weekend. Like, all sorts of different bands. But, and they're doing decently well. But, unfortunately, like, I don't think the idea of a band is in, like, is in people's heads anymore. Because it's not the most popular genre in the world. And I talked about that last week. Bands aren't on top of the top 40 charts. Who are those top 40 charts dominated by? The Weeknd, Drake, J. Cole, Kanye West, Travis Scott. It, bands don't matter that much. Bands are becoming kind of like an alt indie vibe. They're not like, you know, all over the radio. You turn on the radio in 1995, it was Green Day. It was fucking Nirvana. It was grunge music. Like, it was loud rock music. It was rock and roll for the longest time in this country. And now you look at 2022, I listen to the most stuff on the radio. It has some sort of rap influence. Even Beautiful Mistakes by Adam Levine uh, or by Maroon 5 has a Meg Thee Stallion verse in it, right? Like pop is being forced to adapt to this new genre that is hip hop and rap. And bands aren't on top of those top 40 charts. Maybe Maroon 5, you know, when they release an album, will be there for a couple weeks. But that's about it. They're the biggest mega band, I could argue, in this generation of bands. But there's... No real motivation to like collaborate and be like, hey guys, let's start a band in my garage and just jam out to music and see where it goes. There's, it's not like that anymore. It's not. I know bands are like a thing. I just, you know, like they're definitely a thing. There's a band called Sitting on Stacy that's pretty good. Uh, and I listened to them like four years ago, or I saw them live at my old college like three years ago. Jesus, been three years. Damn. And they were fantastic, but they're small. 
And I don't think they have that real big potential to like grow into something huge. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll fucking blow our minds. I don't know. But I don't think they're going to be big because band culture is not the thing anymore. Bands are becoming retro and vintage, which is – that is sad in itself, right? I mean – I was talking about musical collaboration and how it's become this huge thing on social media and on TikTok, but like bands haven't really used TikTok, I feel like, to their advantage. I mean, I feel like I feel like if TikTok was in the 1990s, it would be like most of the TikToks would be like guys posting on their phones being like, Hi, my name is so and so and I'm from so and so and I play the drums. I'm looking for someone who plays the guitar so they maybe they can join a band with me and we can play music. That doesn't happen anymore. The band is no longer the biggest thing. Even Stacey Ryan's Please Don't Text Me When You're Drunk has a rap sort of jazz R&B feel to it. It's no longer the, you know, like, let's take the guitar and just, you know, jam out to some Metallica, right? That's not, that's not happening anymore. Um, and the formation of bands, I feel like, is just changing. You know, like I've talked about how band, I, I, at least I and the interesting obviously have not seen bands really take advantage of, of TikTok and like try to find new members, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like musical collaborations with the pandemic, it's tough. It's tough to like go out in the street. It's not like, you know, the movies where you can just go out and find some, you know, ridiculously talented singer in the middle of the street. You can't do that. Musical collaborations used to be like you go to the live shows and you play at bars and you play at these places. But that's been limited because of the pandemic. The pandemic is limiting the fact that the, the, limiting the band's biggest appeal, which is the live show. The live show used to be the biggest deal pre-pandemic you'd go to those you'd go to these random dive bars and there'd be like this old timey band playing like 80s cover songs right like that doesn't happen anymore that doesn't happen anymore and like adam levine has a point right adam levine has a point but he doesn't have a point when he's saying bands are dying he has a point in saying that like yes they're no longer mainstream and you know they're not dominating the top 50 billboard charts but he also doesn't have a point because I think musical collaborations are, I think bands are happening. They're just happening in different vibes. I think rap collectives are the new bands. I think Brock Hampton is kind of the new style of band you're going to get. You're no longer going to get Green Day. You're no longer going to get Paramore. That's not going to happen anymore. It's going to be more Brock Hampton. It's going to be um, like SOB, RBE, like the Bay Area rappers. It's going to be collections of like hip hop artists more so than anything. Silk Sonic. It's going to be collaborations like that. No longer, it's, it's not going to be bands. It's going to be uh, hip hop collaborations, in my opinion. I think that's where we're going with music. And it's a sad reality, but also it's, it's a new reality. And I think we just have to like open up to it and, you know, be happy and accept that. It's it's the truth, un, uh, unfortunately, at this point, and uh, and that's tough.